John Hickok here. Got the Marlin 35 Remington 336. Really sweet gun. This thing was made in 1952. You've seen it before. This is a chapter two. So dad asked me to bring his old Marlin out and shoot a few shots for you guys on camera. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna give any any crazy, you know, startling, alarming, uh, brand new information or anything um, in this video about this rifle. You know, this is mainly just for shooting. You know, you guys, are, you guys, it's not your first rodeo. You've seen a chapter two before. So, all right, let's take a few shots. The Marlin. This is a real Marlin too. It goes back the old days, long before uh, all the Freedom Group nonsense. It even goes back before you had the cross bolt safety there. So. Pretty nice, not even drilled and tapped on the top. I'll talk about some of that here in a minute. Okay, 35 Remington. Let's start out, uh, well, let's start out simple. We'll get a, get a two liter there, it's that orange one. Takes them out pretty good. Let's go on up, uh, hit the red plate there in the center. Start for the biggest one. Okay, let's try the little one. There's a hair under it. Okay. Yeah, the 35 Remington's a neat round. Of course, it's a popular hunting round. Maybe not as popular as like the 30-30 and some of those, but but it, it kind of has a cult following. It's sort of like, um, you know, kind of like the, dare I say, the 357 SIG of hunting rounds, of, of rifle rounds. It, it has its own kind of cult following. Um, but it's just a, a powerful, so relatively flat shooting round. They crank out at around, um, I think it said on the box, of course these are, are never exact of course, but it gives you kind of a, a basic idea about, uh, about 2,000 feet per second at the muzzle, something around, something like that. I think it's uh, what, 13 or, 40, yeah, about 1,300 at 200 yards, so and it's trucking. Pretty fast moving a little around. It's a little thumper. Not a hunter just like dad, but you know, I imagine this would be a good deer round. I'm gonna put it in there. Oh, too many. All right, appreciate that. All right, that uh, center block right there is, is taunting me. I feel like it needs to be taught a lesson, so let's do that. Okay, uh, while we're shooting center blocks, let's go ahead and do the one on the other hill, on the barrel. Alright. I love lever guns, I have to say. I mean, you know, Dad, of course, is, is a lever gun nut fanatic, and uh, because of that, I grew up with them, so, and watching westerns and everything, so they kind of have a special place in my heart, and, and they're very comfortable to me. Uh, I imagine, you know, they're probably comfortable to a lot of people, even if you don't have a lot of experience with them. But I, I know they're very comfortable to me. Just when I pick up a lever gun, especially with the straight cowboy style stock, so the more you know modern style where it kind of has the, uh, I don't, you know what I'm talking about. It kind of comes down a little bit instead of just being straight like that. It has more of a pistol grip look look to it. Um, but I just I just love the feel of them, especially these uh, good Marlins are a, a nice well-built Winchester uh, and even some of the birdies and stuff. I mean, they just, they feel great. I mean, it just feels like home, you know? So, it's hard to beat. You know, another thing too about, about lever guns is they're considered to be like, I mean, they are old school, but they're kind of thought of as outdated and all that kind of stuff, which they are. I mean, obviously you're not going to, take one of these to war if you could take an AR of course but you could uh, you could operate these things pretty quickly so let me try to demonstrate that a little bit I'm gonna take out all of the two liters and the pot and I'm gonna put a shot in the target so is that is that six one two three four five that's only five and then I'm gonna shoot something over there a red plate okay Okay, 
I got four out of six. <laughs> but I was going really fast. All right. Let's try that again, actually. That's kind of fun. So I missed the pot. I have no idea where I hit on the paper. But I'll try it again. But these are neat. Go back to the old wood and steel guns. This thing loads pretty smooth too, which is nice. We've all had those those lever actions that you know pinch you up there, of course. And, oh yeah, I said I was going to talk about this earlier. So um, so you see this kind of texture up here on the top of the receiver. That's to keep you from getting like a lot of reflection, and also it kind of works as a file if you need to you know work on your fingernails or in the wood uh, hunting. You know it's important. Um, but they didn't drill and tap these back in the old days. I don't know what when they started doing that, but like I said, this goes back to 1952. So I guess that was just before a time when they, um, you know, just assumed everyone was gonna mount a scope on it. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Let's put a couple more on the paper. I have no idea where that, oh yeah, let's see it down this pot. Get him out of there. Got him. Oh, empty already. Six rounds goes pretty quick. But yeah, I mean, that's I guess the biggest drawback of the lever gun is is the capacity. Of course, you know, with the tubular magazine, you can only hold so many rounds without having a thirty foot gun. But they can. I mean, you can work these things very quickly. I mean, it still does not beat a semi-automatic, that is for sure. But you're not unarmed if you have one. I've always kind of felt like the, uh, you know, the cowboy era, the 1880s, was kind of the, the first time where guns uh, really got, got good, you know, to put it in simple terms. You know, when you really started getting into the era of the, the repeaters and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if I had to travel back in time, I wouldn't want to go much further than that. I would, I would feel disadvantaged. Like even at a time when everyone just had, uh, muskets, you know, and, um, and, and stuff like that it, it, before repeaters, it's, it's a, it's kind of a different scenario, uh, when you have a repeater versus something where you can only fire one shot every, I don't know, depending on how long it takes to reload it every, you know, whatever, 30 seconds or a minute. You can, you can still be outnumbered really, really easily. But if you have a repeater, even with just five, six rounds, um, you know, you're kind of a force to be reckoned with. If you come up on, I don't know, four or five outlaws, I guess. So, easy to see why these things caught on so quickly back in the day. All right, uh, this is the last go around, so. Let's try to take out a few animals. I'll really take my time and try to hit them. Start with a turkey up there on the right. Okay, I'm shooting it a little bit low. I'm gonna, okay, let's go to the pigs. All right, I'm gonna go for a chicken. The one on the right, on the top right. Oh, didn't really hit him, he fell over, but... Okay, we'll go for the other one on the left. Got him. Is that the last shot? Nope, got one left. Alright, we hit the little red plate. Pressure's on, last shot. Alright, I got a load. Just a couple more. Can't quit on the last shot like that. It's bad luck to quit on a miss, if you guys knew that or not. Okay, let's do three more. Okay. I hit the same spot. Go. 
Got him. Last shot. See, I missed those first two on purpose, you know, because I wanted to add suspense, you know, and everything for the last shot. So, all right. Well, I appreciate you guys for checking out the video. Just give you another, I want to give you guys another look at the, the old classic 35 Remington Marlin pre-Freedom Group 1952 vintage. It's just a really beautiful gun. And, uh, you know, like I said, I grew up with these things. So, um, you know, I have a, a deep appreciation for a neat lever gun, and especially the, the older ones. And you can just see the the age and the character, you know, in the wood. And, and, and you know, and thinking about the time period that this, this gun existed, I mean, when, when they were cranking this thing out, uh, you know, dad was like, a, he barely could walk, you know, 1952. Uh, so it's, that's kind of special. And, you know, maybe owned by a World War II veteran, you know, the war was still fresh and everything. It's just neat to, I like to think about the time period of the gun when it was made. It kind of adds, adds to the experience for me. But anyways, really, really neat rifle, old school Marlin. Appreciate you guys, and I will see you later. Hey dad, will you throw me another pot? All right, cool. Yeah, I'm just setting up here for another video. Wanted to remind you guys to check out our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you get certified in gunsmithing and get an associate's degree in firearms technology. They also accept GI Bill. So check them out over at sdi.edu. And also check out our friends at vaultexsafe.com. You've seen the pistol safes on the, uh, the, the main shooting table in some of our videos. So check them out if you need one of those. And also go to hickok45.com and you can find basically everything that you need to know about us. You can see all of our various supporters over there and stay up to date on uh, our Facebook pages and uh, Twitter, Hickok45 on Facebook, the real Hickok45 at Instagram. Uh, there's also the Hickok45 and Sun YouTube channel, all that kind of stuff. And full30.com, we've got videos over there. So just go to hickok45.com and that's where you can basically find anything else you need to know. And also our store, don't forget that.